I'm Dorothy Flower. I lead the Medical and Life Sciences Group. I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the trends that I've noticed in recent years in that area. Following the collapse of the MMR litigation in 2003, there were widespread predictions that that was the end of group litigation in the UK. In fact, that prediction has turned out to be completely wrong. Um, one of the most interesting features of the medical and life sciences litigation landscape um, over recent years has been the rise in the number of group actions that are going through the courts. It seems that wherever you look, uh, claimants are joining together to pursue actions against pharma companies, manufacturers of devices, surgeons, hospital, cosmetic surgery clinics, and of course the NHS. Most are relying on no win, no fee agreements, but I don't think that that's the reason. Similarly, we could point to increasing use of social media as being how it is that more people get to hear more quickly about injury resulting from a particular treatment or from a medical device. But of course a person's knowledge is completely irrelevant unless that individual has the basis for bringing a claim. And that's why I'm increasingly convinced that what we're seeing is something that's come to be known as the nocebo effect. The nocebo effect was described by Megan Scudellari in The Scientist magazine as the dastardly sibling of placebo. Now we all know what placebo is. Somebody who thinks that they're taking medication will feel better, even though what they had was a placebo. Similarly, the nocebo effect is when somebody who's given warnings about possible adverse effects, side effects from a drug or treatment, will actually experience those side effects even if what they're given was harmless. In fact, there was a, a clinical trial when 11% of the people who were in fact given the placebo, totally harmless, pulled out of the clinical trial reporting that they'd suffered from nausea and dizziness, which were of course the side effects of the drug that they had not been given. Applying the nocebo effect to litigation, it's not a huge leap to the following. A person who's had a particular treatment hears about others who've had the same treatment, have suffered ill effects and are now suing the provider. The nocebo effect would mean that that individual goes on themselves to experience that, those adverse consequences and, of course, seeks medical and ultimately legal advice. It's just a theory, but I think it's a valid one, and it would account for, for the number of people in group litigation who have complaints of pain but no other adverse symptoms. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how studies into the nocebo effect develop over the next few years.